So my name is Nicolas Silens and I made this film Diva. And Diva is the name of a trans woman whom I discovered on social media. Um, she's the bingo singer and a social media star in Vietnam. And during the pandemic, she posted every day to promote her business of selling noodle because she, because she couldn't work anymore. And what we did for the film is that I watched it with my boyfriend, Dustin, who is of Vietnamese origins. And we, trans we, we translated, to, we selected and translated uh, footage together. And the film is about our relation to Diva and how we look at her. Wow. Đâu em coi em coi coi. Chị khách là vậy nè, vô mẹ. Trời ơi. Gần 50 ly. Dạ có ai phát được không? Phát được thì ấy cho. Phát rồi thôi kệ. Trời con vuốt quá trời luôn nè. Trứng luôn. Má anh nữa. Trời ơi, tôi nghiệp quá. Giờ làm sao trời? Giá ăn hết đi. Thôi đừng có cái đem ăn chị. Bây giờ chị gom đi, chị đi làm từ thiện đi. Chị gom ngay chỗ đó, đem qua cho mấy cô bác mà anh chị người ta đang ngồi ngoài đường á Cái mình đem rồi mình tặng cho người ta Chào cả nhà, hiện tại là khoảng 12 giờ đêm Hiện tại là ngày hôm nay chị Cát Thi à, bán bánh tráng cầu dư đó các bạn Và chị Giác Tiên bán à, bắp nướng cầu dư được à, một vài phần Thì ngày hôm nay chị à, Giác Tiên cùng với à, chị à, Cát Thi Cùng với anh em phụ bán và anh em à, làm Youtube Đi à, vòng vòng trên các tuyến đường tại Sài Gòn Để tìm à, các... À, người có hoàn cảnh khó khăn để tặng những phần bánh bấm nướng và những phần bánh tráng trộn để làm từ thiện với các bạn. Phía trước chính là chị đi qua các thi, còn chị đi qua các thi được anh tú đặt, chú đặt làm tóc chở đó các bạn. Đây, đây chính là chị. Chào chị. À, chị Giang Tiên mặc một cái bộ áo mà ba rất đẹp luôn các bạn, mà ba màu xanh, xanh lá mã. Hiện tại thì Diva Cát Thi đang tặng cho cô này à, bánh tráng trộn và bắp nướng của chị Giang Tiên này các bạn. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Bois Bobek and this time we are discussing the film Diva. Hi Nicola, welcome to the Teddy, welcome to the Berlinale. We are very happy to have you here with us today. Um, can you tell me about Diva, who is the main protagonist of, of, of your short film, and how did you get in touch? Um, hi, thank you for, for having me. Uh, I, um, so Diva, the name of the film, is actually the short name of uh, Diva Kati. Yeah. Uh, Diva Kati is a, uh, is a bingo singer, so this is a, um, something cultural we don't have here in Europe, but she sings uh, the numbers for bingo shows, which are mostly like family, uh, uh, family shows where people go to play bingo, but also listen to the songs and stuff. And during the, during the pandemic, she had to stop performing and she started to sell uh, noodles on the streets of uh, Saigon. And to, 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 to promote her business, uh, she did, um, she she um, she she started to to broadcast things on social media, and this is the material we have used to make the film. I see. Um, it was very interesting because obviously, as you say as well, it's it's a it's a cultural thing. The the bingo singing, and she really also has a very large following um, in 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 Vietnam. Um, and uh, in a way, this this cultural difference also came through the language, which you comment in the film, um, and you worked on bridging this with your boyfriend. Can you tell us a bit about this um, this aspect of the film and how translation becomes a key element here? Um, the so I we. we, we... I mean, my boyfriend and I came across uh, Diva. Um, as at first, we were amazed by the 
by the, 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 the pictures because she had like so many people waiting for so long buying these noodles. So we were quite fascinated by this. Yeah. And then like to talk more about the process of uh, translation, uh, since I, I, I don't speak a word of Vietnamese, most of the work has been uh, like a common work where we would sit and watch Diva like sometimes several hours a day and watch the footage. There was like a thousand hours of footage and we would choose among this footage, but also discuss the implication of our choices and of translation. Yeah, it was interesting to see how there is a large community around uh, around Diva Cathy and also how um, she fulfills a very important role within the community and how important it is for her to give back in a way and to and to help her community. Can you talk about this communal aspect um, behind the film and and how and like what kind of role she really takes within this community? Um, I came I came to understand that for Diva, uh, it's it's about like um, acting as a matriarch. So in order mm -hmm. to make herself uh, understood and accepted, she is using the codes of the matriarch. So this is a figure that is important in uh, Vietnamese culture, and somehow, yeah, I came I came to the conclusion that the place she's trying to take by doing um, by doing some kind of uh, uh, fundraising events. Uh, by taking uh, adopted children to give them a job. She's like really embodying this sort of uh, mother figure. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in the, towards the, the beginning of the film, uh, there is a very interesting interview segment with her um, where, she, where she talks about um, that even if in the near future, society will accept uh, transgender people. Love will forever remain an issue for them because no one will like stick by them for life, which I thought was a very interesting point of view. What was your take on this? And, and uh, can you comment on that? Um, yes, actually, I can answer a previous question at the same time, because we uh, at first uh, um, we tried to contact Diva and she was absolutely, absolutely unreachable. Mm. And then at some point when we, we, we came to the end of the of the process, we really needed to tell her that this happened because the first time she didn't really believe and we were we were happy and also scared that suddenly she would say like, oh, you used my footage without telling me. And uh, so, so there was a tension there. And what happened is that actually she was very touched and she cried because of this, because she felt that her story was uh, getting out of Vietnam. And what she's talking about is mostly this uh, advocacy for for trans people in Vietnam that she thinks we are they, they are like quite far away from like uh, being recognized. Mm, I, I see. What was your your artistic approach to all of this? Because as you see, there are so many different layers to the film. You use different kinds of materials and footage shot by different people and appearing in different formats on, on certain social media channels. Um, so I was really curious about how you organized the material all together so that it would create this, this narrative that, that the film tells. Uh, so first, we collected all the materials. So, so, so we needed to, to not not only I mean we needed to download them from from um, from the platforms. Yeah. So we collected the material and we went through this thing of watching uh, almost everything together. Even though we we also became a bit more experimented along the way, and some videos we would just know that there is nothing interesting. So it was going a bit quicker because this was a very long process. And and from from this uh, from this we 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 kept about ten hours, not depending so much on the on where we found the video, but uh, on 
how interesting the material was. Yeah. And from this, uh, from this, uh, from this moment that we, we we selected this, then we just went through a process that is almost a, a classic editing process uh, of like choosing and trying to make something that is uh, that is shorter and change the order to to understand what the film can become. Mm. And, and then, then if I am more precise, then we had a film that was maybe one hour, 30 minutes, uh, that looked pretty much like a, like, a, like, a, like a classic documentary. So there was something uh, missing. Um, and what was missing was that, that the figure of Diva was also interesting because of this process of translation, because of our, of our, our gaze into mm. Diva's life. And that's how uh, we came up with the idea to not only use the, the subtitles, but to yeah. use also uptitles and right. to have a sort of uh, a process of translation that we are used to that re reminds uh, of uh, what you find with automatic translation on YouTube, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and in these subtitles, we decided to 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 yeah to explain more of this process, but also of the misunderstanding and all. I mean, what 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 looking at Diva made us uh, think. Yeah, can you talk a bit more about this process because that was very interesting. These subtitles, I thought it was it was uh, it was intriguing in the sense that in the subtitles we see what's happening with Diva and and her narrative is progressing. Um, in the in the subtitles, but then in the in these uptitles, um, like quite personal stories from from your part and from your relationship and from your boyfriend's uh, family history came out, and it was an interesting parallel um, the two to see the two together. Um, can you talk a bit about this? Um, so so formally. I like the idea of the subtitles because it gives uh, the, the the spectator the impression that uh, you have to choose between following the main story mm -hmm. or following the the story that we uh, that uh, that is being told in the subtitles, and so this was the main because this is not a, a feature that you use often because like subtitling in, I mean, in, let's say classic documentary is considered just a tool to understand, but yeah. here it takes its own meaning and you constantly have this feeling that it's a bit too much to read. Mm -hmm. um, and for, for, the, for the content, we started also to realize that, uh, that there was a lot of, um, of similarities of things that we found interesting in Diva's life that re, that, that that were uh, uh, close to, to 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 the relation of Dustin with his own parents. So 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 I guess the this idea of having the pictures and two different type of uh, subtitling is very close to this thing that we were almost like always like uh, three parties doing this. So, so, uh, so, so somehow Diva is a, is a proxy, but Dustin is also a proxy for, for me to understand Diva. And that's how we, 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 we imagine sort of uh, uh, that it would reach a, a, a greater community. Yeah. You allude to this in the in the film that you were not able yet to to go to Vietnam and to and to meet uh, Diva um, regarding this process. Have you been able to do that ever since? And has she seen the final product? Yes. So we we uh, actually. I mean, this was a part of the project uh, was to to have Diva come to Berlin mm -hmm. to okay. see the film with with everybody uh, for the premiere in Berlin. But unfortunately, it happened that we couldn't manage the visa process. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's really hard, especially to go back to Vietnam because I mean, right. yeah, this is like different technicalities with COVID. Uh, but for me, it was a, an important part that that uh, almost a performative part to the to the film itself that she would come and we would meet her in person finally. Yeah. Um, 
and unfortunately we had to uh, uh, we had to cancel this mm -hmm. so so we we did everything online because we needed to actually record the video in advance to have a small yeah. greetings from her for yeah. the screening yeah that really is a shame that it didn't work out it would have been a great experience for her as well i believe um the other aspect what was very um interesting to see is that there are other trans women in this circle um, that we see um, and that uh, she is in touch with um, and since there is this massive following um, for diva it made me think about um, how that might change the perception of, of, of transgender people um, in Vietnam and I mean she herself also says that you know like she sees it as a as a short-term process that it would become very accepted uh, in this culture she she said that yeah like probably in a few years this is gonna be um, not an issue anymore um, like what are your thoughts on on social media playing a role in this and and yeah do like i mean obviously um you have probably like a limited um a limited look on this but how do you see what is the situation for transgender people and how people like diva kathy could um could change this situation through through social media um i i guess um I guess this is, uh, I mean, there is something that is important to say about uh, um, LGBTQ uh, rights in Vietnam mm -hmm. is that um, that the communist government is forced to be a bit progressive on some uh, issues, okay. um, mostly because of business uh, relation with uh, other countries. and. Diva is probably right in the sense that it's going to get better because this is a very, it's a quite easy is issue to to solve for the for the, the the communist party. So they are they are somehow they are willing to do this. And about the effect of this uh, social media uh, presence of Diva, I guess it's uh, it's uh, it's something that she's very self conscious that that it's important to do this campaigning and to talk about it, but that people keep looking at them as uh, some kind of uh, uh, strange people or mm. people that are linked to entertainment. I mean, this is also uh, when she performs, she she addresses often these issues that they, they, they are like a, a everybody else and they are not like nothing special, but they are forced to, to, to perform and do these sort of things. Yeah in order to get accepted. So there is something a bit, uh, I mean, yeah, something uh, uh, you were talking about love at the beginning and there is like, so there is also this uh, tragic thing about like getting accepted by the community and at the same time being forced to do things that are uh, entertaining or part of this social media. Yeah, right. I mean, in this sense, your film in a way also contributes to to similar efforts probably um what what is your hope what would audiences after seeing the film could take away from 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 this story uh, i guess um, i guess this is linked to to what uh, interested me in diva's story is that the the the, the way she does uh, activism is so uh, overtly normal. She's uh, playing some kind of uh, like a mother figure, like doing the good and everything that I, I have imagined that it would not only be uh, not beneficial for the, uh, I mean, it, it would of course like bring to light uh, the trans community in Vietnam and these uh, questions, but it could also be that we understand like some kind of um, strategies from the strategies that uh, Diva is uh, deploying in Vietnam, because we are also, I mean, in Vietnam, we are talking about, uh, about a country where the f freedom of uh, expression is very, very low. Um, so, so she's 
she gets unnoticed because she has developed strategies that seem so normal and uh, culturally accepted that that she can do this and have these millions of followers without having a problem. I mean, like if you campaign against uh, against climate change in Vietnam, you go to prison, for example. So this is not nothing that she's able to do this mm -hmm. and that the government accepts yeah. this. So I thought this was for me the most uh, interesting or fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nicola, thank you very much um, for being here with us and, and for, for this nice talk and also for, for this very intriguing film. Um, I wish you all the best thank for you. the Berlinale. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.